Now, I often joke that all 9-11s are just Beatles, and being loosely based on a bug, there is an element of truth to this. Recently, a new trend has gained popularity with P-Car folks looking for a little recreational off-roading. Sure, they're fun, but they can be quite expensive. Now, let's get back to the Beatles, and I don't mean the four lovable lads from Liverpool, I mean this thing called the Class 11 Baja Bug. This whole Baja thing really began back in 1967, with the now world-famous Baja 1000 mile race across Mexico. With almost 75% of the cars entered in the inaugural race being VW Bugs, it was obvious that the little love bug was affordable, available, and well-suited to off-road endurance racing. With a few modifications, of course. Euro Motor Parts Inc. It's been around since the early 60s, making go faster, handle better, and look cooler parts for the VW world, both on and off road, as well as for the drag strip. So it only seemed natural if I was going to drive a Baja bug, a new MP and SoCal native Corey Ryder, a man who grew up with dirt in his teeth and 30 years of seat time off road, would be the perfect place to start. So, Corey, Tell me about these Beatles. Class 11, what is that? Literally, Class 11 is kind of the, the sportsman, the, the sportsman racer. This okay. is the closest thing to a standard bug that is designed and built for off-road racing. This is something that you can build as a home project, and for a few thousand dollars, you can get out and go racing and go have a fun time. Break it down in simple terms, though, from getting a Beetle to getting it lifted, what are you doing to take it off-road and actually make it reliable off-road? Well, that's the fun part about this class. It's a spec class, so it keeps everything really affordable. Okay. You know, really, we're taking a stock front-end beam and we literally cut and adjust it and turn the knob to give it a little bit more torsional lift. Okay. You still run all drum brakes. You still run a stock transmission. What about the drivetrain? You know, the heart and soul, the motor, the engine? Motor is, again, it's a spec class motor, 1,600cc okay. maximum. How much horsepower are you getting out of that lump like that? We're getting close to triple digits right now. So. Triple digits? Yeah, we're getting about is 100. Is this a trade secret? This is, is a trade secret. With, with the MP some, some profile or something? Oh, yeah. So we, we, we really spent a lot of time in our in-house dyno. Performance-wise, it's just literally R&D, R&D, R&D. What is that class? That's a 5 1600 class. So That's that car, literally the big brother, if you will. So you're able to beef the suspension up. You're able to put a bus transmission in it. But they still run the same motor. Okay. It's just these cars are hitting... Carrying more speed, carrying more whoops. speed through everything, and okay. they, they are fast. So let me ask you, what is the secret to success off-roading? Obviously, you got to finish, but what is the secret out there? You know, is smooth is fast, or yeah, tell me I what mean, the key is. Smooth is fast. Champ, the races are won in the shop, in here yeah. in the garage. That's where everything's done. The prep is key, and you got to get lucky. Off-road and rally racing is definitely a motorsport where you want a friend with you, telling you where to go so you don't drive off a cliff when to speed up and sometimes slow down. And you could hardly do any better than Cameron Ferre. It is a little car, but it does pack quite a punch, even at 100 horsepower. So um, the biggest thing, so I'm a co-driver with Corey, who normally drives the vehicle. A number one, you're an emotional support person Got for it. the driver, which Got sounds it. a little weird, but it's really a very important job when you're out in the middle of the desert trying to navigate yourself around. Number two is you got to know where to go, right? Right. So the biggest thing is we got to map the track previous. We got to make sure if there's any big objects or anything in the way. We don't want to run anything over. We just want to go straight to the finish line and win this sucker, got right? It. So that's what they call pre-running, right? Pre-run, and then after, like even in the biggest race, you know, you got to make sure you finish. So right. sometimes faster isn't always better. Got it. So let me see how it is from the driver's okay. seat. So it sounds to me like you're super knowledgeable from the passenger seat, but wouldn't you sooner be here in the driver's seat? Yeah, I would uh, have to agree with you. Actually, I this is the co-driving is actually my hobby. I'm also an NHRA top fuel driver uh, within the NHRA, so um, I I go 300 miles an hour for most of my living. So whoa, whoa. Um, <laughs> you got a need for speed. So 10,000 horsepower, you've harnessed that, but you're still having fun with 100 horsepower right here. Tell me what I need to know as a novice going off road for the first time. What's going on here? It appears to be like some sort of navigation. Yes, yeah, so being the co-driver, obviously navigating is, is the most important part of it. So you have kind of the, the navigation instrument cluster here. So 
the communication, whether that's uh, we can talk to you and I, and yep. then also to the race master or our spotters. You got power in the back, yep. and then you got clutch in, ignition, yep. fuel, fuel, and then push off. Start. Feeling pretty good. So talk me through the navigation part of this. So as, if we're rolling like now, like if we're in a race, like this will be all marked. There'll be either straights, rights, lefts. And if it's like a double or a triple, that means there's a really like a hairpin turn or a big drop or okay. a big jump. But like something like this would be a one. You just kind of goose it and just keep going. So this seems to be like third gear as much throttle as I dare take. Stuff like this would probably be like a third gear deal. And then as you get into the sand, you're going to have to rev it up. What's the same winning down throttle out? There you go. It makes sense they call this a class 11 bug because on a scale of one to 10, driving this feels like you've turned it up to 11. Of course you couldn't do this with a stock bug. And thankfully, that's where Tim from Sletton Engineering, the man behind the MP builds, comes in to talk me through some of the changes you'll need to make your bug handle just like this one. All right, Tim, so they tell me you built these cars. Tell me exactly what it is you've done to them. So I built the two uh, 11 cars, the 69 and the 70. Okay. Um, we start out by completely stripping them down to bare bones, and then we build up from there, as in starting with the chassis, modifying suspension components, and then adding in the rest, shocks, fuel cell, everything else that goes into them. Do you media blast the actual shell all the way down to see what you've got and then start, you know, rust replacement panels and stuff like that? For the best result, yeah, you yeah. want to media blast all okay. of it. Um, guys on a budget can't always do that, got but it. for the lightest car possible, that's what you want to okay. do. Let's talk a little bit about contact patch to the ground. What are we running on wheels and tires? This is totally different than any road racing. So obviously we're limited to about 100 horsepower, sometimes a little less. So you want the happy medium of contact patch. You know, we may have an eight inch tire in the background, but we only want three or four inches of that touching the ground. You know, Otherwise the more- you're creating drag, Exactly, right? the Friction. more traction, the more drag. Right. When it comes to suspension, like on a 516, you're allowed a one inch longer front arm and you're allowed a one inch longer rear arm. We're pushing 10 inches of travel in the front, 14 to 16 in the rear. That seems quite a lot. Yes, sir. Hi, man, let's go get dirty. I guess it's a balance over the whoops first time trying to figure how much. Yeah, that's a problem because they're so short that they that they they buck a lot. How do you find the rhythm? It's just a feel at, at some point, you know, Same like time. sometimes faster is better, but if you get the front end to tuck down, that's not good. Yeah. You want to try to stay on top as best as you can. Those if you kick it the wrong way, it can side load the car and Talk me through side loading the car. What so, is going to happen? A lot of times the, the car like will, will slide down the side of a jump or something real rough. And what happens is it cracks the, the lugs on the wheel. So the wheel will actually want to come off the lugs. All right, Corey, so you talked about actually making your own parts, and obviously it seems like we're going into the machine shop side. Tell me what's going on here. Yeah, so we do a lot of in-house manufacturing. This is our machine shop. We have multiple uh, Haas machines and CNC equipment here where we make a majority of our uh, billet products right here in-house. In How many item SKUs do you have? Oh, and is empty as a whole, yeah. over 27,000 SKUs. Wow. So you'll get a good idea. This is some of the ported heads getting done. So you'll see all the chamber work that we're already doing here. These are already getting all machined. You have a bunch of different types of ports. We'll put all the seats in here. We do all the valve guys. Everything's done in-house. So it's shipped already set. Shipped, Seated. ready to go. That way there's no problems with the engine builders. Okay. I know Porsche guys are running MP axle CVs. Tell me about this. Is this your number one item? That's definitely one of our higher rated items. I mean, we make them for so many different things, not just cars, but also industrial purposes. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things about Impy is, you know, we've made the financial investment for the future to continue to keep these cars on the road. That's Whether it's stock fenders, to the frame horns, to the aprons, to stuff like, if you got a crunched front beetle in the bug, we got everything you need. So it looks like this is what I call shipping shit out. You probably yeah. call it something different. Yeah, well, it depends on the day. On so this is our skin packing department. One of the things we really want to do to continue keeping the brand true is we skin pack. Is he heat shrinking there? So that's actually cutting it already. It starts down there as a heat shrink and he goes down and cuts it. Wow. Things are cooking here. Yeah, we, we are extremely busy and, and we're very fortunate for that too. Toward the end of the day, I noticed this big hill looming in the background and I figured, why not attempt it? If you have a Baja bug and a sense of adventure, you've got to go for it. You gotta keep it revs, right? Yeah, you gotta keep it revved up because it wants to bog down. I think this is it. There we are. There we go. Yep. Teamwork, fella. Teamwork. There you go. I'll tell you something, fell out was well worth the drive up. Look at that view. Heck yeah, man. I'm glad you guys came out and uh, got to experience a little off-roading. I got to tell you, I've gone off-roading like some new vehicles on press drives and stuff like that, but nothing beats the emotional, adrenaline, memorable moments. You know, and I have to admit, when I first got it, I felt super comfortable in the car straight away. Absolutely, you progressed every time we went out in the car and, and that was phenomenal. You know, you can definitely drive the wheels off a car. That's I have awesome. to say, I appreciate that when I finally could keep my foot planted in second gear and third gear and I'm like rolling on, that sort of summed it up. So I might have to get myself one of these because believe it or not, I'm a Porsche guy. I always joke, they all look the same. They're all Beatles, but I've never actually owned a Beetle. I've owned a, a Beetle bus, but I've never owned a Beetle. And I think for me, this is the way into it. <laughs>